Welcome to Landlord Diaries, where we talk about midterm rentals and the opportunities behind them. We'll share landlord stories, talk about maximizing investment potential, and discuss how to live the very best landlord life. This podcast is proudly brought to you by Furnished Finder, the place for everything midterm rentals. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy our content. Hello, hello, everyone. It's Kelly Bailey, your host of The Landlord Diaries. We are going to turn the table today and interview Katie. And I am so excited for you guys to hear everything she has to share about tips for marketing, how her midterm rentals are doing. So get excited. But we have one question for Katie uh, on the intro here. What does a day in the life of Katie Lyon look like? as marketing director of Furnish Finder. Oh my gosh. It looks like the master of ceremonies for a circus who's juggling like (laughs) a million things. Like you've got an elephant in one hand and then like, I don't like uh, juggling all the things, but, um, (laughs) you know, I'm here where you, if you're watching on YouTube, we're at my desk most of, most of the day, but working on communication to landlords and tenants and prospective, you know, property owners. We're working on things for conferences. We're working on the podcast. Uh, We're working on special projects and, and all those sorts of things. But there's usually, you know, a good eight projects in the hopper at any time. (laughs) I usually have I usually have one to two dogs in my office at any time, you know. <laughs> that does sound like a lot to juggle. Well, let's let's see what else you have to juggle on the episode. And quick reminder, this episode is bought, brought to you by Furnish Finder, your go-to place for midterm rentals. Enjoy, everyone. Don't miss today's episode with our very own Katie Lyon, Marketing Director of Furnished Finder and Midterm Rental Host. Katie has an impeccable eye for design and tips to make your listing stand out on Furnished Finder. In the first half of this episode, we will address your tough questions like, is there a best size midterm rental? Do higher rental rates work on Furnished Finder? And many, many more. In the second portion, we will talk with Katie about her personal midterm rental journey with out-of-state investing in Florida and Iowa. Katie, 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 my partner in crime, my co-host, how are you today? (laughs) I'm so good. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Everyone wants to live a day in your world as marketing director of Furnish Finder or vicariously through you. So what are some tips do you have for our midterm rental landlords out there? And these are mm-hmm. this one's just general, and then we'll get into some right. specifics. Okay, sounds good. Um, you know, I when I think about marketing, I think about it as marketing is the way that you are communicating the good or service that you have, right? A lot of people think about marketing as it's you know, it's branding or it's logos or it's social media or it's emails. And those are all ways that we market, but marketing as a whole is how do you take what you're doing in your own little world and spread the word, right? What are you doing? So I just think it's really important for everyone from a marketing mindset to, to remember that everything you put out there about your properties, your rentals, or you as a landlord is your way of telling your story. Right. So be very cognizant of you know, your photos on Furnished Finder, your details, the, you know, the language you use, if it's, if it's intriguing, if it tells your story, your, your profile, how you communicate back and forth with tenants, all of those things matter and all of them make up the pie that is marketing, right? Like it's not just one thing or another. So pay attention to the whole and remember that everything you send out the door, so to speak, is marketing and it's representing you as a landlord and your property. It kind of brings it back to its trial and error, Uh right? uh Like marketing is an art, not a science. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's trial and error. You got to see what works for you. Actually, I want your feedback on that. So we, of course, we recommend posting your properties on Furnish Finder and that we do have our uh, social media platforms. 
where you will see a lot of listings being posted. But really, if you want your best results, post it on Furnish Finder or as a traveler, put in a housing request. And mm -hmm. every landlord in that city will see your request and what you're looking for and reach out to you. But for those that I've always been curious about this, and I feel like a marketing director would have a good answer for this. Why should you not or why should you put your phone number or your email address out on social media? It's like everyone kind of hides mm. those things nowadays. What's the right way to do it? I don't think there is a right way. And I know that's not the answer you want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think part of it is your level of comfort right? Your personal level of comfort. I know as a female, you know, I always have my guard a little bit higher. Um, I think it's your level of comfort. I will say though, my go-to for marketing is make it easy for people to contact you, mm. right? And tell them how to contact you. So if you're posting in the Furnished Finder, um, Facebook group, or even if you're posting on the platform, which like you said, is going to absolutely get you the best results. Um, tell people what to do, right? Everyone probably thinks that it's silly when they check their emails and they see emails from all sorts of different companies. And it says book an appointment. And you're like, I, I know it seems silly to have heard all of that stuff over and over, but it's because consumers like instructions once they've made the decision about what what to do right so let's say i'm susie traveler and i've made the decision that i am interested in your property kelly i don't want to make any more decisions i just want to contact you so as silly as it might sound as like okay surely they can dig and send me a message or whatever like no no no. tell me do you want me to text you do you want me to email you do you want me to message you through the platform do you want me to DM you on Facebook, like, tell me how to do it. Because as a consumer, the challenge is making that decision. And once you kind of get over the over the hill of making that decision, make it really, really easy for any traveler. That is excellent points. And you know, what's funny with our show on the landlord diaries on YouTube, when I when someone leaves a comment, and I want to go do a little further dig on who they are. A lot of people don't know that's a social media platform yeah. too now. It's like, yeah. put your contact information and who you are on YouTube also. And uh, Kelly here might reach out to you as a Furnish Finder host. And I I'll also add, like, if you don't feel good putting your email and your phone number out there, open a different Gmail account. They're free or get a Google, what is it, a Google phone? Like you can get a phone number that isn't your personal cell phone or something, right? Like it, we have the tools, ooh, shaky. <laughs> we have, <laughs> I just bumped my desk. Um, we have the tools now where you can allow people easy ways to contact you, um, but just make sure whatever you're telling people to do to contact you is a way that you will respond, right? Making, awesome. make it easy. Well, let's get into the gold of marketing tips from the Furnish Finder marketing director. So we're going to start off with how can a landlord make their listing stand out? Mm. Pictures, people. <laughs> Pictures. <laughs> There's a few ways, right? But let's start with, with photography. I was, this is maybe a little known fact about me, but I was a professional wedding photographer for 12, 13 years, right? I got published in a few places. Like I know my way around a camera. I still outsource photos of our properties because real estate photography is different. These photographers have wide angle lenses. They know exactly how to show off a space they're not expensive. Okay. And the reason they're not expensive is because it might take them 30 minutes to an hour, hour and a half, depending on the size of the property to actually photograph it. And then it doesn't, you know, it's not a labor intensive process as it would be like for say a wedding or, you know, something else that that is going to take longer. So they're used to pumping out a lot of products. So you can, I've never paid over $200 to have a property shot. That being said, my properties are smaller, um, but it's worth its weight in gold. Um, the other thing I've seen is a catchy headline. Put your most important things in your headline. Uh, put the availability date, 
put if it's close to hospitals put if you have extra amenities if you have a pool if you have a hot tub put that in the header um the other thing that i've seen done really well and i like is um in the property description using bullets or using like an emoji check mark things like that make it really easy for us to digest unfortunately our brains have been trained by social media cons consumption that if we see a bulk of text, our brains go, oh my God, that's too much. I can't read that. <laughs> and we all, we, we all of a sudden forget that we do know how to read. So if we see a bulleted <laughs> list or chunks of small text, we feel like that our brains can handle that better. So chunk it out and also think of who you're marketing to, right? Always keep that in the back of your mind. So if you're marketing to a travel nurse, show a picture of your curtains or make sure your curtains are in a lot of the pictures and make sure you put in the description blackout curtains, right? Quiet environment, um, secure entry, free parking, whatever it is, make sure that you know who, who you're talking to. Good points. Really good points. I'm about to pull the trigger. Uh, two of my homes are really close to a nice river park and dog park. Ooh, so so I'm about to pull the trigger, yes, on aerial photography mm. and see if they can capture all of that essence in one shot or a couple shots. Right. So I'll, I'll, I'll circle back in a future episode on how that goes. Yeah, and <laughs> have your photographer get a few pictures of the neighborhood right? Yes. Or the outside view, or, you know, and you can also like, if you're really close to a downtown center, put a couple pictures of the downtown center. Mm -hmm. You can probably get off Google. Um, mm -hmm. but don't just, you know, make sure that you're really showcasing like what you have. Definitely. Yeah. My, my photographer that we found here in Austin, not only offers professional images, but like I said, you can add on the aerial photography, you can mm -hmm. add on the videos, or you can even add on a floor plan because I was realizing my Georgetown property, one of them, the two-story one, it's the only one that a lot of people ask, can we come see it first? Mm. And so when I got that question multiple times, I realized, okay, I'm not doing a good job of walking them through the layout of the property. Right. So it's time to take the next step. So that's the other thing I'm about to do is Upwork's competitor, Fiverr. We've got mm -hmm. uh, an episode with Terry Roberts, and I was so sad we forgot to talk about Fiverr on there. He loves it and uses it. So I checked it out and I found a really nice 3D floor plan provider that it's like 20 to 40 bucks. So I'm, yeah. a, I'm about to pull the trigger on that one for Georgetown as well. So do it, man. yeah. Awesome. Anything, anything you can do to help those people feel like they really get to know the space without being in there. Right. So everyone wants to know, is there a way now that there's midterm rentals is like the shiny new object and new new hosts are adding properties to the market all the time. It, how can someone improve their listing placement on Furnish Finder? Mm. So we, we don't have like a magic stew that we're hiding from everyone, right? And I want to make that really clear. I don't know why I just thought of a magic stew. I'm trying You're to making me hungry. Know. <laughs> like the leprechaun, you know, the rainbow, what's the pot of gold? The pot of gold. Yes, we don't Dave, have a Dave's the leprechaun <laughs> in our family. <laughs> Why did I call that a pot of stew? The gold, <laughs> we don't have a secret pot of gold. Yes, there is an algorithm. It is very, very logical. Um, people who are gonna be placed up higher in the algorithm are people who have an updated calendar. They're gonna be people who are active on the on the platform. They're people who are going to respond to messages in a prompt manner. And they're gonna be people who have complete listings, right? So you're not leaving out details. Um, and then have good, good pictures and a sufficient number of pictures, right? Having a couple of dark, dingy pictures or screenshots is not helpful to travelers. So we don't want that. Um, I will also say that keeping your calendar updated doesn't mean that you have to have consistent immediate availability it just has to mean that it's 
accurate, right? So that we can look and say like, oh, Kelly has been updating her calendar. We know that this is when it's actually available. Kelly, it's, you know, let's say that it's mid July and we see that you haven't updated your calendar since March. We're going to assume your property's rented, mm -hmm. right? Because it's been a few months or something has happened. So we just, you know, we want to make sure that our priority for the travelers is giving them properties that are, um, you know, complete and accurate. So having those things really is key. So potentially every time to make it easy, when you go in to check a tenant lead, just refresh your calendar at the same time. Is that what I'm hearing you right. say? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that would be pretty easy. Yeah. Or even I, I will do it, you know, if, if I have a tenant in there and it's not available for three months, great. I update it. I don't have to worry about it for three months. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's one that I'm looking to fill the vacancy for, mm -hmm. I'll refresh it a little bit more frequently just to make sure that it's accurate. Okay. I like it. Well, another one of those questions that uh, we see all the time, how do I know my property is a good midterm rental before I buy all this furniture? I mean, I would say, does it have four walls and a roof? <laughs> no, there, you know what, here's the thing guys, our, our platform started with housing for travel nurses, right? Travel nurses typically, are not looking to stay in a six bedroom house that's $10,000 a month, okay? Our travelers now are more hovering around 50% travel nurses. So there are a lot of other audiences. There are, um, you know, digital nomads. There are remote workers. There are families who are just like, hey, mom and dad both work from home. Let's go live somewhere else this summer. There are grandparents who are coming to visit family for extended time. There's snowbirds. Insurance there's claims. Insurance claims. There's relocating families. There's corporate travelers, right? Um, there's people who are being placed by their company. You know, they're not necessarily relocated, but they're going to be living there for six months and then they're moving else, whatever. There's all these types of situations where you just need to know who you're marketing to. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you have a studio apartment, design it, describe it and market it to a studio apartment tenant. If you have a three bed, two bath home, design it, market it and aim it towards a small family or a couple, right? And you just always kind of have to have that person in, in the back of your mind. Um, it's, there's no, like there are, there's a, there's a demand and a need for all different types of midterm rentals. I will say it's kind of like a triangle, right? There's the most demand for studio to two bed properties there's also the most competition. Then you're going to get up and you're going to say, okay, there's two to three bedrooms. There's a little bit less demand, but there's a little less competition. Then you're going to get all the way up to the top and you're going to say, okay, I've got my four or five, six bed houses that are really great for relocation or insurance claims. They have a higher rent, higher profit. There's a smaller supply. There's also a smaller demand. So you just need to figure out where on that, like, you know, fictitious triangle I'm making up right now, <laughs> like <laughs> where feels right to you. Mm -hmm. Right. Excellent point. There's people in the space that do it all sorts of different ways and succeed. Excellent. Let's take this time to highlight. We're saying insurance companies, relocation companies, they know to come to Furnish Finder to search for mm -hmm. uh, midterm rentals because one, we're geared uh, for 30 day plus stays. And two, we have a really cool feature called a housing request, which translates to landlords as tenant leads. Katie, do you want to give a quick overview of why the why these features are so valuable uh, mm -hmm. in the OTA game? Yeah, it's, it's huge because it turns our platform into a two way conversation, right? So if you think about Airbnb, VRBO as a traveler or as an OTA, which for those who don't know is online travel agency. Um, so let's say I am 
looking to place a family who has an insurance claim. Their house went up in fire and they need somewhere to live for six to nine months, right? If I go on Airbnb, I'm in a one-way conversation because Airbnb's business model and is that they want you to book on platform, right? It's mm-hmm. a booking site. Mm-hmm. So I can send out, I can ask a couple questions, but really the, the business happens on the platform. So mm-hmm. it's like, you like what you see, take it or leave it type of situation. On our platform, there's me as this person who I'm trying to, I'm trying to find a home for this displaced family. I can put out um, a housing request so I can essentially, I'm taking the megaphone and I'm saying, hey, anyone have this? I need this. Or I can also do a booking request, which is, hey, Kelly, I see your property. I want your property. Can I have your property? Yes, yes, you can. Right. (laughs) But but instead of just having that one-way conversation, a booking request and a housing request, what both of those have done is open the doors to a conversation. Right. And then you and I can take it and we can go sign a lease or we can negotiate terms and, and we can figure out what's best for everyone. Um, so that's, that's a really big perk. And that's why a lot of these OTAs like coming to us is because it makes it more flexible for them. Mm -hmm. And that's, you hear that commonly now as well for the direct booking, uh, push of don't rely on OTAs, which is, you know, there's a good point to that. Uh, build build your business, build your repeat guests. But what's really cool about Furnish Finder is we're not a direct competition like a lot of OTAs are. We provide you the phone number and the email address for anyone that chooses to put in a housing request or reach mm-hmm. out to you directly on Furnish Finder. So you can take those contacts and continue to build your book of business as like using mm-hmm. Furnish Finder and your personal platform as well, which is really nice. Yeah, for sure. Okay. The last uh, tip uh, before we end with a heartfelt question. Uh, what's the deal with the no booking fees and how does Furnish Finder make <laughs> money if there's no booking fees? How do we make money? It's back to that magical stew. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, there, there's no booking fees. So, and this is something where I spend a good chunk of every day making sure everyone understands, um, when you go to Airbnb and we've all done, like I, I still use Airbnb for when I go on vacation and I want to stay for four five, six days, I'll see, okay, the property is a thousand dollars. And then I get to check out and all of a sudden the property is $2,000. Some of that's going to be a cleaning fee. Some of that's going to be occupancy tax in certain Mm -hmm. areas. Some of it is an Airbnb fee, which is pretty hefty for the user's side, Mm -hmm. um, for the traveler's side. On the landlord's side, they also get a chunk taken out. So what you, what it, on a traveler's side, what it looks like you're paying the landlord, they're not even getting all of that. So it adds up, right? Mm-hmm. And Airbnb's even started this new thing where they they have the option for you to see the prices with all of the fees included, mm-hmm. right? Which is great, but it also makes you realize how expensive a lot of them mm-hmm. are once you add everything up, right? Mm-hmm. So on Furnish Finder, we're taking ourselves out of the middle. We're 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 just saying, okay, property owner Kelly, landlord Kelly. And travelers, here you are. Like, we're like the matchmakers that we put you all in the room together. And then we say, okay, we, we trust that you will go on a date. <laughs> um, like, so we're taking ourselves out of that equation, which leaves you with complete flexibility, right? So if you have special rules, if you have special terms, if you want a higher deposit or a lower deposit or whatever it is, it's up to you. It's your property. You do what you want. Like you're a big girl, <laughs> but from the traveler side, or for those paying... big men out there, or yeah, the big men <laughs> or, for, but from the traveler side, they're not seeing that two, $300 fee, whatever it is. 
And from the property owner side, you know that like, okay, Kelly, you charge $2,000 of rent. You're going to get $2,000 of rent, mm -hmm. not $2,000 minus this, minus this, minus this. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and how do we make money? We get this question a lot, which kind of surprises me because it's such a weird question, <laughs> but it makes sense because everyone's like, no, that's too cheap. And I have to explain it a lot. Like, no, it's $99 a year. And they're like, what if I sign a lease? It's $99 a year. <laughs> okay. What if I rent my property out? Or what if, I don't know, anything. Nope. It's $99 a year. Per property. Per property, period. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it's a no brainer to Katie and I, but some of you have a lot of questions out there of, right. should I do it? Right. Right. And, you know, we are not, a, you know, we're an established company. We're not a greedy company. So we um, make money by the value we provide, guys. There's a lot of listings on the site, but our point is that, you know, we're not trying to be greedy here. We're trying to provide value to travelers and we're trying to make for landlords, we're trying to make it affordable for you to market your property in a really meaningful way. Mm -hmm. And for those of you out there that like numbers, I, I paused and thought about it one day. And so if you're not aware, we have currently over 200,000 properties on the site. Well, you take that quick math, multiply it times $199. That sounds like a pretty good start to me. And then Furnish Finder's got plenty of add-ons, right? Like your owner verification yeah, bag. Right. Badge. You can, uh, if you don't want to physically sit there or don't know the best way to market your property and don't trust yourself, then, you know, for a small fee, you can have the Furnish Finder team do it for you. So there's a lot of options to make mm -hmm. it more efficient and flexible for you as well and rely yep. on our marketing team. Yep. Okay. You ready for the heartfelt question? I'm ready. Uh, Furnish Finder was founded in 2014. How did it come about? And what can you tell us about the founding team? Mm. Well, Furnish Finder has been in, in existence since 2014. It's really been kind of more in its present format since 2016. And it started very organically as just a need was discovered for housing, um, more affordable housing for travel nurses, right? Um, and looking back, I think a lot of the strings, you know, attached to the heart, the, the tugging at your heart happens because it was also coincidentally a few years before COVID, right? So it started, you know, the the owners started a uh, and founders the marketplace for property owners to list their properties they had previously had some properties that they rented to for, to travel nurses saw the success and eventually kind of wanted to escalate the business right so <clears throat> you you have this growing marketplace this growing business of okay let's take care of these travel nurses and then all of a sudden covid hits and we all realize how much nurses and healthcare providers, they're kind of like the support system that are always there, but you forget about them until you need them. Mm -hmm. And in 2020, we all needed them, right? Mm -hmm. Directly or indirectly. So it kind of, and, and travel nursing was in high force as different, as different areas of the country had different levels of needs. So, I think looking back, like coincidentally, like that was a really kind of cool evolu evolution of the company and the way that we served um, the healthcare market. I love now also that we get to serve so many different markets, right? Travel nurses are the heart of the company. Mm -hmm. There's still um, every decision we make, everything we do, we want to make sure that they are at the heart of that decision because we will forever want to serve them in the best way possible to mm -hmm. give back to them and, and thank them for what they're doing. Um, but it's really fun to also be able to think, okay, what about like a digital nomad? Or what about that relocating family? Or what about that family whose house went up in flames and they need somewhere to live? Like, it's just, it's really cool to see the impact 
of what we're doing and mm -hmm. how it matters. We're also a really tight knit team over here, um, which I want everyone to know, like we're, like I said, we're a, an established company, but we're not giant, right? Like we're still at the level where we're like real people, right? And like when you send, when you call customer service, you're talking to a real person and we're working to get through emails every day. And when we see something come up on the site that we see that we can make better, we get our head, we put our heads together and we're like, okay, how can we make this better? Right. And we're, we're just constantly kind of plugging away to always be making it better. Yeah. We hear you out there. Yeah. We do. Uh, excellent. Excellent uh, explanation. And for those of you that aren't aware, I love the fact that our founding team is, it's a family business. It's like our, our founders are a husband and wife duo. So Brian Payne is our uh, CEO and founder. And then his wife is our uh, CFO. And then the bro uh, their brother-in-law was also a founder as well and plays a large role in the company as co-founder and continued support. And, you know, I don't even know what all he does. He does so much great stuff. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> it's like those silent but deadly people, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're the best on the team, but you never know it because they, they, they're not at the front lines with the rest of us. Right. So Brian Payne, guys, if you have not caught any Furnish Finder episodes, he's on many podcasts. So if you go to, you know, your favorite pop podcast platform or YouTube and type in Brian, B-R-I-A-N, Payne, P-A-Y-N-E, you're going to have quite a few episodes that you can watch and relate to our CEO and just who he is and his heart behind the company. And don't forget to like, subscribe, or comment. We would absolutely appreciate your feedback and ratings uh, on Apple Podcasts, but I think you guys are going to really want to save this episode because Katie has provided so many great tips. And if you talk about Furnish Finder, these questions come up so often. What about mm -hmm. higher price properties? What about, you know, what's the best size for midterm rentals? Will mine work? I don't know. Is it is it a good fit? So rather than having to reproduce those answers every time, you can just save this episode and let people watch it. So and right. let's just add too that if you have any questions about marketing your property on mm -hmm. Furnish Finder, go ahead and add them in the comments on YouTube and I can keep an eye on it. Ooh, ooh. So uh, Katie, I think this, I'm making the executive decision. This is part one of part your one, episode. Baby. Uh, so everybody stay tuned for part two next week, which is going to be Katie's story of how her midterm rentals are doing and why she even invests in real estate in the first place. So enjoy everyone. Bye.